Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Yes. So can uh, one of us please pray? Okay, uh, how about Rose? Rose, uh, uh, is it is it okay? Like, would you be able to pray or to? Okay, I'm not sure what what time of the day it is uh, there in New Zealand. Uh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Christopher, please, please go okay. ahead. Yeah. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for giving us a new day, a new, uh, a new day to um, show your, show, keep showing your love for us, and for us to keep responding back to you. We thank you for this this class uh, that um, that is uh, ahead of us. Uh, we ask, we ask for you for your for your strength and your guidance for us to be able to get the most out of this class yes. uh, we thank you for uh, uh, pastor pastor nancy uh, we uh, thank you for giving us uh, giving uh, giving us the opportunity to have to have this class uh, that um, that she's going to be teaching us and um, uh, we ask you to continue to keep us um, uh, in good health safe from harm um, for us and uh, for our families in jesus name we pray Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. Uh, what a wonderful way to start off uh, this morning's class. Um, and this uh, course that we uh, will be doing uh, during this semester, it's called the Local Church. And the, um, the textbook that we will use for the course is uh, The House of God. Again, it's an APC publication. And I've posted it on your classwork page. You can download it. You can follow along as I uh, go over it. So the local church uh, is, um, uh, you know, something that uh, each one of us is very familiar with. Uh, I'm sure uh, some of us have grown up, uh, uh, you know, uh, grown up in church. Well, it, it would still be okay to say that because we've been so closely associated with church. But then there are others, you know, as you've come to know the Lord later on in your life, um, you know, you've learned the the value of fellowshipping. You've learned the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, fact that the church, the the church, is something that uh, the Lord Jesus has instituted, and uh, you know, He displays His power and glory through the local church. Uh, so we we have uh, uh, different kinds of. Um, um, you know, uh, exposure to the local church. But the most important thing for us to realize is that though we may have our own understanding, God's understanding about the local church is what uh, each one of us need. And uh, each one of us uh, need this also because, you know, not just for ourselves, but for others that we minister to and others that we serve. So what does the word of God or the Bible say about the local church. That's what we will understand, uh, you know, throughout this semester. So uh, just as an overview, what are we going to cover? We are going to cover the purpose, the origin and the purpose of the church. And uh, we will also look at the intention that God had in um, initiating or establishing the church. So uh, I'm going to use the word blueprint. Okay. Now we know that whenever uh, uh, something needs to be built, uh, generally what people do is you know, they they come up with a plan. They come up with a really uh, uh, effective plan because the time, resources, and energy that we that they invest uh, in building. It could be uh, some sort of a gadget. It could be some. It could be a house that somebody is building, or you know, it could also be a craft uh, uh, a project that somebody is undertaking. Whatever it is, you know, uh, usually we begin with a good plan. The reason is, as you start working on it, you don't want to run out of resources. And when it is done, you want to make sure that it was worth your time. 
and it is the best outcome uh, that uh, could possibly have uh, you know uh, uh, that you could possibly have uh, come up with so uh, when we are so careful uh, in the natural realm to build things uh, for maximum effectiveness how much more uh, you know for us to be uh, cautious about building the house of god uh, or the church according to his blueprint so we have to go by god's blueprint each one of us can have our own different ideas uh, for what makes the church work what makes the church great you know what makes the church a blessing so if i go over and ask different uh, ones of us i'm sure you you would say you know many different um, points things like it should be warm people should be friendly um uh, the the arrangement for the services should be comfortable so we all have our own opinions but what is god's opinion uh, what is god's blueprint for the church that is uh, crucial and we are going to study god's blueprint for the church and then we will also take some time to uh, study about church administration in a brief way uh, we will look at uh, uh, the city wide church you know and the kind of impact that the city wide church can have uh, uh, over the people of the city so these are all some uh, topics that will come and we we will uh, get into detail as we look at each topic so yeah so the blueprint uh, is is what we will focus on uh, and one thing that i want to clarify before we uh, go further is uh, we are not going to specify methods and techniques uh, yes there are examples that we might share from different local churches and because you know pastor has put together this content he has examples from his own uh, ministry of uh, how the church was established what are some of the things that he engaged in so there are those examples but uh, it's not that everyone has to use the same method uh, or you know everyone has to go by the same uh, uh, you know uh, way of doing things because we serve a creative god and if you uh, look at the different churches that already exist okay uh, and the way god is working in them the way god is working through those churches you'll notice that uh, he is very creative and uh, uh, the things that the way he leads a certain church is very different from the way he leads a another church so every single minister of god has to walk with the lord and understand how god wants to lead that individual okay uh, yes go by the original uh, intent of god by the blueprint which is given in god's word but at the same time be open to the leading of the holy spirit and the holy spirit will guide you uh, and instruct you on how you must build the local church uh, now we also understand that every single person in this class may not be uh, wanting to pastor a church okay so how many of us uh, want to be pastors or you you sense that call um, uh, upon your life that you know you you are meant to be a pastor maybe you're already a pastor okay samuel okay samuel yeah mangi okay samuel mangi they sense that pastoral call on their lives anybody else you feel that god has called you to be a pastor okay kishan kishan very good kennedy wow kennedy siddhant great great okay siddhant who else any other uh, pastors in training all right it's great i mean uh, quite a few of you are Oh wow subhajit already ministering uh, in a small church wonderful wonderful subhajit that's great to hear yeah so that's that's amazing so many of you are already a part of uh, building the church of god as a pastor but it's not only the pastor okay who can strengthen the church and build the church of jesus christ yes there is a primary role that uh, god has uh, uh, given to the pastors but whatever role the others of us have okay 
we can still serve god we can still strengthen the body of christ now maybe uh, you know uh, some of us here we are saying that i am engaged in children's ministry okay how will this course be relevant to me house of god i'm not going to be a pastor it doesn't matter because you are still building up the lives of uh, children who are very much the church of jesus christ okay so you are building the church through your children's ministry some of you may say oh i'm engaged only in worship i'm called for worship that's fine you're still building the church of jesus christ some of you may be excellent with administration managing the logistics that's okay because there is a grace for administration and that can also be used to build the church strengthen the church so a lot of what we discuss it will uh, it may sound like it's only for a pastor but you know don't be misled it's not uh, only the pastor who needs to build the church but whatever the grace and calling of god upon each one of our lives we can all contribute towards the strengthening uh, and the growth of the church okay uh, and uh, similarly the fivefold ministry offices whatever uh, our uh, you know calling is in the fivefold ministry every single person has a part to play and uh, uh, it's important for us to just uh, realize that and serve god passionately so let's begin with uh, chapter 1 here so the first section that we are going to cover it's uh, called origin and purpose of the church so uh, in this we in this uh, section there are uh, a few chapters and these chapters will throw light on how the early church began what is god's original intention uh, in establishing the church you know uh, uh, and all those primary and preliminary questions will be answered in this section and uh, if you have uh, any any uh, additional questions no feel free to uh, ask you can post it on the chat or you can unmute yourself uh, even during the class if you think it's relevant at that point or if you can wait it will be good for us to take it up towards the end of the session so chapter 1 here in our notes uh, is on page number 3 okay that's where i'm going to begin all right so we are introducing the church and uh, uh, you know what the intention of the church is what the the primary uh, goal of the church really is so the familiar scripture for us is uh, from matthew 16 and i was thinking this week we talked about it in our uh, class uh, in kingdom builders as well okay matthew 16 verses 15 through 19 where you know jesus says that uh, 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 answering to simon peter uh he said to them but who do you say that i am simon peter answered and said you are the christ the son of the living god and then jesus answered and said to him blessed are you simon bar jona for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my father who is in heaven and i also say to you that you are peter and on this rock i will build my church and the gates of hades shall not prevail against it and i will give you the keys of the kingdom and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven so who is the builder of the church from this passage who is um you know the the who is responsible to build the church Jesus Christ Jesus Christ yes so he takes the first responsibility and the primary responsibility and he says i will build my church so in a sense all others who are serving and contributing we are working together with Christ okay he is the one who is building the church but we are co-working together with him and you know when uh, jesus asks uh, peter um who do you say that i am and peter answers he says you are the christ the son of the living god okay and then jesus goes on to say okay uh, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my father in heaven and i also say to you that you are peter okay you are peter and 
the second the next part of that statement jesus says <coughs> excuse me and on this rock i will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it so my next question to you is um on this rock i will build my church what is this rock that jesus will build the church on jesus christ okay yes he is the builder that we've understood but he also makes a statement no he says on this rock i will build my church so what is that rock the apostles we the people are the rock okay peter will build on the foundation that jesus already made okay good good very good very good thoughts good answers the revelation revelation okay okay revelation uh, kennedy says faith abhishek believer all right all right yeah we with uh, um you know we're all thinking in the same direction uh but just looking at the passage there you know uh prior to jesus saying that he will build uh the church on on this rock peter says what what does peter recognize the lord jesus as you know peter says you are the christ the son of the living god okay so what jesus is saying is he is saying the church will be built on the revelation of the lord jesus as messiah so what is the foundational stone of the church the lord jesus is the messiah he is the preeminent one no he is the central figure for the church the church was uh, uh, you know the church we the church we say believers how are we even believers because of the redemptive work of the son of god the lord jesus uh, and you know his work would not be valid if he were not the messiah but here peter is giving uh, jesus the right answer and he's saying you are the christ that term christ there is the anointed one the messiah the savior of the world so you are the christ the son of the living god so peter had this revelation that jesus is the messiah and what jesus is saying in response to his recognition of him is that on this revelation that i am the messiah i will build my church and that is a uh, foundational for the church of jesus christ now talking about building the church uh, in this very passage jesus also mentions about the keys of the kingdom and we've talked about this earlier keys represent authority okay and jesus says i will give you the keys of the kingdom whatever is bound uh, uh, you know bound one second let me read that properly for us uh, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven okay now if you look at the greek version of it in the english it sounds like whatever you do here on earth that will get done in heaven but the greek version of it actually the meaning says that whatever is done in heaven that gets released here on earth okay so the, it's the other way around the actual understanding though in english it sounds like we first do something and that gets done in heaven so uh, jesus used this language um, because of the uh, you know the setting of his times so um, what what uh, uh, ministers would do or, or government officials would do and particularly those in uh, you know uh, those who were in the legal 
a sector, what they would do is they would have rules and regulations given by the government and they would just go and establish that uh, in, in new territories. So whatever was loosed by the government or whatever was allowed by the government, they would go to that new territory or the new community and establish it. Right. And similarly, whatever was not allowed by the government, they would go and they would just uh, close those laws or they would they would put restrictions and limitations on the people. So they were used to this kind of language. And that's why Jesus used it here essentially to tell us that we now are the representatives of heaven. And what we get to do is we can allow and disallow based on the um, uh, based on you know what is what is available in heaven you know what is what is rightly ours in heaven so uh, i've i've shared this earlier as well that you know uh, when there's joy when there's peace when there's uh, 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 healing deliverance things like that available for us uh, in heaven you know we are we are able to release it here on earth uh, there's no sin in heaven, right? There's no injustice in heaven. Uh, there's no oppression in heaven. And when we see those things in our life, here on the earth, you know, we can actually stop those things, restrict them, bind them in the name of Jesus because we are applying the law. I'm just using the term law for a lack of a better word, but uh, the atmosphere of heaven, right? The... Um, uh, the pattern of heaven is what we are here to propagate on the earth. So uh, that is what Jesus is actually saying in this passage. He's saying that the church will be built on the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ and the church will be empowered. So you, we have the keys or the authority of the kingdom to go ahead and allow the things that are allowed in heaven and disallow the things which are not allowed in heaven. Another uh, a point that is made in this very passage is that the gates of hell, okay, Hades, uh, in other words, uh, referring to hell. And Jesus says that the gates of hell will not prevail against us. Uh, gates, even in Jesus's times, uh, even in the Old Testament times, were always stationary. Okay, And the kind of gates that we see, uh, 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 you know, uh, at that time, they were not our uh, usual, um, uh, you know, just simple uh, gates that uh, allow people within within a boundary and, you know, uh, so on and so forth. But they were actually structures uh, on which people could build houses. So, you know, if you uh, recall fortress, they, they would have fortress for, for a city and even the fortress wall there, it would be uh, like a, a large wide space uh, on which people could build their homes. Okay, So Rahab uh, is, is a, a good example of a lady who lived on a wall. Right. Um, so in the same way, when, when you look at gates, okay, gates uh, where wide spaces uh, and not just you know one uh, one structure that we're talking about and at the gates uh, many a time uh, leaders would gather people of influence over that community would gather and uh, how uh, today um, for us here in india we are familiar with you know the village government system the panchayat where they sit uh, right they sit in a place and they make the make the decision uh, similarly the gates were the place where leaders would sit and make decisions. So the gates of hell refers to strongholds, refers to um, a strong influence. You know, it, it refers to uh, 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 power sources of the kingdom of darkness. Okay. Uh, and this is what Jesus is saying. He's saying that the church, it's not a powerless entity. But you can imagine uh, if he's saying that the gates of hell, the power sources or the stronghold of hell, it's not going to withstand what the church is actually capable of doing, then the church is that extremely powerful entity representing Christ, right? Um, that is able to overcome every uh, every work of wickedness of the enemy. And that is the introduction of the church for us. Okay, So 
a lot of key things uh, in this very passage jesus is the one who builds the church the church is built on the revelation uh, that uh, of uh, the lord jesus being the messiah uh, and then we see that uh, we have been given authority okay uh, and uh, what can we do with this authority we can establish the pattern of heaven here on earth we can bind the works of the evil one and finally we said that the church is very powerful uh, powerful enough to destroy the power even the power sources of the kingdom of darkness and that's the kind of church jesus said he would build and today as we look at ourselves as the church of the lord jesus christ you know we we can remind uh, ourselves that um, this is the kind of church that the lord jesus is continuing to build uh, today now again this term church right um, you don't see it uh, uh, much in in the uh, like you don't really see it initially in in the word of god but then eventually you know the 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 church emerges and the people who um, are followers of the lord jesus they began to be uh, recognized as uh, the church okay and this word church comes from the greek word ecclesia okay in simple terms ecclesia means called out called out so we as the believers we are the ecclesia of god and we have been called out we know that through salvation we have been called out of sin uh, we have been called out of our wrong way of living uh, but also we have been called for greater things okay we have been called uh, for a definite purpose we have been called with a heavenly calling uh we have been called to um you know stand together uh, and establish the kingdom of god here on earth so we as god's people we have been called out of many things but we have been called into the purposes of god so the church of the lord jesus christ has a purpose you know we're not just here because god thought it's a good idea to establish a church because you need a local community that will represent uh, you um, you know god is in heaven and he he uh, did not think that a representation is good enough for him not at all but there is a purpose why the church has been established there is a purpose why the church is being strengthened okay there is a purpose uh, in in the lord jesus calling us out so we have been called out of many things but we have called into and called uh, for the purposes of god and as the church right uh, as the people of god we must recognize it now when we uh, talk about the church and its purpose we can understand it in two dimensions there is a spiritual dimension to uh, what the church is and there is also the natural dimension but before i go any further i would like to pause for a moment and um, just check with you all if you are doing okay and if there are any questions i i do see christopher's uh, uh, hand raised there so yeah let's let's uh, hear from christopher and samuel and then we will continue yes christopher uh, you have a question Yes, I uh, just wanted to yes, uh, ask you to explain this um, this foundation of you know the revelation of of Jesus Christ as as Messiah. If you could just explain that in more detail, um, is it about the is it about the teachings? Is it um, uh, you know because I I, I remember uh, you know we did this uh, similar passage uh, last year in uh, in the uh, uh, you know the interpretation of the Bible. Uh, uh, that course and that you know that was where you know we have actually made a distinction between peter and uh, you know not being the rock but the rock was actually jesus christ um so just wanted to understand a little more if you can provide a little more detail on the the revelation of of jesus christ as a messiah if you can just explain that in, in a little more detail please Pastor, you're on mute. 
Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, I, I didn't realize that. I was saying I'm uh, looking for an, one more passage. So. Okay, uh, I, I don't know if I will be able to find the exact words. But uh, if you remember, there's another place where, you know, um, Jesus asks the same question, who do you think uh, I am? Right. And uh, the disciples answer and uh, they give him the same answer. They say that uh, you are you are the Christ because others at his time, uh, they thought that he was a teacher. Jesus says, you know, people think I'm a teacher. People think I'm uh, a leader. People think so many different things about me. But who do you think I am? And the disciples give uh, a befitting on, you know, they give the right answer and they say uh, you are the Christ. All right. Uh, so this revelation, this revelation is very, very important uh, uh, because, uh, you know, how, how do I put this? Uh, the Lord Jesus, he, he was sent to the world and he became our uh, redemption prize. OK, but if we do not consider him the son of God and if we do not consider him as that lamb, who was sent for our redemption, then the salvation that we experience and the salvation that we preach, it's actually invalid. Okay, so salvation itself begins with us recognizing that the Lord Jesus is the Messiah, the anointed one, the savior. And it's only when we are saved, you know, that we become a part of the uh, the body of Christ, the house of God or the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the church that Jesus is building. So you can imagine, you know, if if we never receive salvation, then we do not enter the uh, church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. So that revelation that he is the Messiah, it's very, very important because that revelation is what leads us to salvation. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, Christopher, so that is the basis. If we do not recognize the Lord Jesus as the Messiah, we miss out on the very work of redemption that God has done, you know, by paying such a big price. So uh, we need to recognize that. Okay. So would that, would yes. that mean that when we are, when we are, when we are born again, uh -huh. uh, in a sense, when we are born again, that would mean you know we 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 also receive salvation. Yes. And therefore, we are we are then you know um, uh, you know we are sort of in 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 line with the, you know the the foundation of the church also. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. That's right. And we can't be born again without that revelation. It's just not possible. Right. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, Samuel, please go ahead. You have a question. Thank you, Pastor. Now, uh, along the same line, I mean, uh, we had this question as part of our last year's um, interpreting scriptures uh, final assessment. And I remember, yes. uh, so we did a lot of research and then uh, this revelation that you're speaking of, I think mm. that was the key answer that uh, Pastor wanted us to bring. But I remember having this question that I couldn't you know, ask back on the assessment paper. Mm. But I'm, I'm just wondering, like, I mean, it makes so much sense when you say like, you know, upon this revelation, uh, that yeah. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that the church will be built. You know, when, mm -hmm. when you put it in that light, things become so clear. But I'm mm -hmm. I'm I'm looking at all the scriptures that are available to us, all the mm -hmm. versions from NIV to NASB, like I am I'm even have, but all of them don't have that. Uh, it doesn't mm -hmm. give that like it's only when somebody explains like how mm -hmm. you're doing right now, you know, it, it becomes ah like, but a normal reader would read it. It it reads, you know. So you are Peter, Peter on the rock, rock yeah. and on the rock I will build my church. So, so I'm just wondering why, you know, why is that like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's still like even though, mm -hmm. and, and how, um, I, I don't know if, if um, you may have the answer, but uh, just this this idea, you know, this this whole uh, Matthew 16, 15, 19 as one mm -hmm. of the key scriptures of uh, how the church has been founded, like how how um 
um, how long has this been this revolution been in place like uh, did did uh, like you know Jonathan Edwards or uh, mm-hmm. William like the, the preachers of those days like did they also have uh, this revelation did they teach or is it something that we've just in this century we've discovered oh okay this is what this passage mm-hmm. means okay yeah thanks uh, uh, samuel that's a good um, you know a good question there uh yes it is difficult uh, sometimes to interpret because of the way uh, you know the the passage comes across but we know you know uh, after all your hermeneutics training you you are aware that you can't even though <laughs> like you have to look at an unclear passage in the light of clear passages and you have to let scripture interpret scripture so when you do that and you um, uh, uh, make a statement and say that peter is the rock on which the church was built you know that statement will not last very long if you use many other scriptures you know to prove that one statement mm-hmm. uh, eventually yeah eventually you have to say no it's incorrect so what is the right answer and then you will um, uh, deduce uh, the answer to the fact that it is the revelation that jesus right. is the uh, son of god now uh, coming to your next question where you're saying when did people have this revelation uh, honestly i mean historically i don't know samuel i'll have to do some research to uh, you know figure out who probably was the first one who uh, mm-hmm. shared this so yeah can i get back to you on that yeah sure sure no problem. okay great thank great thank you yeah. thank you good questions class um uh, and it's nice you know let's let's keep thinking and let's keep uh, mo- moving forward so this is uh, you know our uh, uh, basic introduction for uh, the church the purpose of the church the um, uh, the builder of the church is the lord jesus christ and we are but co-workers with him uh, and i told you that there are two dimensions of the church okay uh, there is the spiritual dimension and as a part of the spiritual dimension there there are um, you know some things accomplished in the church and in us and there is the natural dimension so we will look at both and what both of these uh, dimensions say about the church and about us who are part of the church so uh, considering the spiritual dimension we are told uh, in god's word that we now are the body of christ okay the church is the body of christ so uh, it's a very interesting thought as soon as you accept the lord jesus christ you and i uh, we become part of the body of christ christ is the head uh, and we are the body this is in colossians chapter 1 verses 18 and 24 i'm not going to read all the scriptures so just letting you know where we are at so christ is the head and we are the body okay uh, and as you as you look at this you know we are also told that every single person every single who person who receives the lord jesus christ is joined together with the lord jesus christ okay now physically we can't see these things but this is what happens spiritually when somebody is born again now they may know that they are a part of a church part of the church or they may not know that they have become a part of the church they may be um, you know a lone believer uh, maybe they don't want to go to church right they just want to have their own spiritual development alone at home but whether they are part of a physical church or not this is what god's word reveals to us that the moment somebody is born again you become a part of the body of christ okay? that's automatic automatically in the spiritual dimension uh, we become a body of christ and there are several scriptures in our notes for us where we are told that we become joined to the lord uh, then we are baptized into the body of of christ uh, we become united with him we become one with him and every single believer you know individually becomes a part of this body of christ and uh, as we become the body of christ uh, it shows us how god treats us okay a uh, very beautiful uh, uh, explanation for this is found in acts chapter 9 when uh, uh, paul encounters the lord jesus on the road to damascus uh, you know what jesus jesus speaks to him by the way jesus speaks to him and he says 
a Saul, why are you persecuting me? But who's actually being persecuted? It's the people of God, right? And when the people of God are being persecuted, what does it mean to God? What, did, what does it mean to the Lord Jesus? We, now who are the body of Christ, you know, he's saying, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Okay, and that, that is the, the, the extent uh, to which we have become the body of Christ, where we've become, you know, we've become one with who God is. Uh, and in the spiritual realm, that has happened to us as we uh, have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. So the church uh, is the body of Christ. And that is, you know, one um, uh, expression uh, of, of being the body of Christ in the spiritual dimension. Okay, what else do we see uh, about the church? In the spiritual dimension, we also uh, see that the church uh, is eternal. Okay, it is eternal just the way the Lord Jesus is eternal. So by that, we uh, understand that, you know, we will live on. We, the people of God, will live on. The church will continue on. Right. Uh, and there are scriptures that promise that God wants to continue to be kind towards us even in the ages to come. So that reveals that God has a purpose for the church, not just on the earth, but even in the ages to come. Okay. So in the spiritual dimension, these things are true. Thirdly, okay, uh, we see that the church becomes that instrument to execute the purposes of God. Uh, now, uh, we know that the Lord Jesus has ascended to heaven and his uh, primary ministry there right now is uh, in intercession. Uh, but he looks to us, the church, okay, to go ahead and release the power of God, to go ahead and do the works of the kingdom, to go ahead and uh, you know win souls for the kingdom. And that's why even before his ascension, uh, in all the gospels, you see the Lord Jesus say this, right? Go make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And uh, behold, I am with you even to the end of the age. So he has, in a way, chosen to let the church become his uh, hands and his feet to go ahead and do the work that needs to be done to execute his purposes here on the earth. Okay, And uh, a few more uh, aspects of the spiritual dimension is that every member uh, is, part, is part of the body individually. Okay. It's, so um, I, I already explained this, whether people recognize it or not. Okay. Uh, you have become a part of the body of Christ. You have become a citizen uh, of uh, uh, heaven uh, and individually. God doesn't uh, forget about uh, even one person. He recognizes everybody and includes everybody into his kingdom. And we are united together with Christ and we are uh, a part of the body of Christ. The church now, the other uh, aspect of the spiritual dimension is that the church, you know, whenever you use the term church, uh, it's not just the church which is alive here on earth. Uh, we also have those who have believed in God and gone ahead of us, right? And now they are in heaven waiting for the, uh, um, uh, you know, the return of the Lord Jesus, the second coming and all the other events that will uh, take place. But a part of the body of Christ, a part of the church is in heaven. So when we use the term church, uh, we also recognize that, uh, you know, we are not alone in that sense. Yes, some of us are on the earth, but there are others who have uh, completed the work and they are part of heaven. So uh, those who have gone ahead of us and we who are living for God on the earth, all of us put together, make up the spiritual church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. So uh, I think at this point, I will uh, stop. Uh, we can all take a break and we can come back. But uh, before we go for our break, if, if at all there are any comments uh, from your side, I think it'll be good to share our thoughts.
okay so uh, yeah i think uh, you can just take it all in and uh, we will be back and continue with the natural dimension of the church okay so see you all uh, in about 10 minutes thank you